Good afternoon to you. Report your altitude. Uh, 2,000 feet on 1014. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravo. Hello YouTube, Wycliffe Barrett here. Today we're going to look at EGLC, London City Airport, right in the heart of uh, the capital city of London. It's by Orbex Simulation Systems. It's a beautiful airport and as you can see here, it fits so well with True Earth Great Britain South. Don't forget, before we get started, click on the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and also get the bell on and you'll be notified of when videos go live. As you can see, here we are, we're looking towards Canary Wharf, which is a I suppose one end of the runway and just off to the right hand side is the Thames Barrier Relief uh, system, in other words, flood defences there. Um, right, London City Airport was first built in, believe it or not, 1986-87, and it's built on the Royal Dock. Uh, it used to be a, a part of the Docklands area here, and uh, as you can see, it's, it's literally built on the dock. It was reclaimed ground. Uh, they actually put uh, a lot of earthworks in there to create the runway. The runway is approximately 1,500 metres in length, and so therefore there's only a few types of aircraft that can take off and land at this incredible airport in the heart of the capital of uh, the United Kingdom. Um, the largest aircraft that can be uh, flown out of and into the airport is the Airbus A318 which has been specially modified for the steep 5.5 degree approach into uh, London City Airport. Now Orbex, they're, once again, they're throwing out their airports as quickly as possible. And they've done a wonderful job with this one. I like the light transit railway system there. Unfortunately, there are no trains on it, or I haven't seen any trains running as yet. Um, it looks great, apart from when you get to one part of that railway line where they haven't blended it too well with the uh, True Earth Great Britain South photo scenery. But it's, you know, it's not a deal breaker. It's just one of those little things that... As a reviewer, I can find, whereas maybe the average user may not notice even. It's a pretty bland airport because uh, there's not an awful lot to it. In fact, the terminal here is very, very small. I've been to London City Airport, uh, plane spotting right down there, past that uh, KLM aircraft there, right down by in that car park on the right-hand side there. And uh, you can get yourself right opposite the touchdown zone. And I must admit, it's quite thrilling. The number of aircraft that go in and out of London City is absolutely staggering. There's also a um, London to New York uh, route from London City Airport. And I think it's that Airbus A318 that has been modified for the steep approach. And quite simply, it departs from London City and refuels at Shannon Airport in uh, Ireland. Um, and then goes on to New York. It's a very expensive flight. Um, I believe that London City is one of the most expensive airports to fly into and out of, primarily because you are flying right into the heart of the city, which is ideal for business, finance, and of course, not only is it flying right into the heart of the city, it's flying right into um, the financial area of Canary Wharf, which is... Um, uh, at the other end of the uh, runway. As you can see as we do this approach into runway 27, uh, you can see Canary Wharf coming into view, all the buildings there. Also, you can see uh, the Millennium Dome in the background, that white kind of circular thing that we're, you can see above the EFIS is uh, the Millennium Dome. It is, uh, it's not an easy approach and whilst I was in the 737-800, I was flying very slow with almost full flaps and uh, I had full auto brakes uh, ready to be applied. But I managed to land quite easily uh, coming in onto runway 27. Now, from my experience of actually going to the airport, aircraft tend to uh, land on 27 and take off on the opposing runway, which was 05, I think, no, 09. So uh, they land on 27 and then they take off in the opposite direction. They will not take off heading in towards the city and Canary Wharf. They, they go the other way and then they'll turn around. Uh, a few weeks ago when I was in London, actual fact, at Hyde Park, the number of aircraft that you see coming out of London City that actually turn 
over Hyde Park is staggering. In fact, if you ever go to London at all, the number of aircraft that you will see just flying around is amazing. Um, they're all over the place. Uh, in terms of price, this is, uh, I believe, $32.95 Australian. I'll put the price up here in UK and dollars as well, right about now. And uh, it's a uh, good value for money, not only because it fits so well with True Earth, Great Britain South, but for what you get. I mean, you're not just getting the airport, you're getting surrounded environments as well. There's hotels, you've got the Tate and Lyle factory uh, on the right-hand side as well. One thing I will tell you, you're going to need a, a quite a beast of a machine for this. It is uh, quite FPS hungry, especially with the True Earth Great Britain South, which has the wonderful scenery of uh, London. So you will take a frame hit. Um, a friend of mine went down from 75 frames to 45 frames per second, although 75 frames per second is a bit overkill. It's not really required in X-Plane. Uh, certainly for if you're using VR, maybe, but... Uh, 45 frames per second is, is more than adequate, but if you have a machine that's any less than uh, capable, then you are, you're you not going to be in a slideshow, but you might see some uh, stutters and obvious um, speed, speed restrictions. Uh, and that's why, and I've left those in here, as you can see, but this is an external shot, and so there's an awful lot of work for the computer to do there, but... You know, I've left these. I've left it in so you can see these stutters. I'm on quite a healthy machine, an i7. Uh, it is getting a little bit long in the tooth now, the processor. But I'm still wear, I'm still using a, a GTX 1080, uh, which is more than adequate. But as you can see, it's just struggling a little bit with these external views because it's, it is doing an awful lot of work. Anyway. There you are. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. It's a brilliant airport. If you've got Orbex True Earth Great Britain South, then this really should be an addition to your uh, library. Um, as I say, $32.95 Australian. I hope you've enjoyed the video. We'll see you soon. Cheerio.